How's it going, my side friends? My name is Gary, and this is my channel, Week at Stuff Weeks. If you love how-to stuff, you've definitely come to the right place, and especially side-related videos, so consider subscribing. Today, we are again working on my Laser Red 2008 Saab 93 Arrow. If you're wondering as far as the blue one, which one of my subscribers has of Sablutage, which I absolutely love the name, I may actually have to get a Euro plate to make it official. Well, it is currently outside, really cold, chilly, windy and snowy so this one is tucked in the garage for some major issues which we're actually not going to be resolving today i'll kind of discuss what's going on but we are here to resolve a rather annoying issue on any 2003 to 2011 2012 Saab 93 so let's go ahead and get started Here is the wheel well on the driver's side of my 9.3. Now you may be asking what on earth happened to where your CV axle is just flopping there, the caliper is off the bracket, it's missing a slew of things, the strut, the sway bar end link that goes from the strut to the actual sway bar, the dust shield, brake rotor, and obviously the pads. So. In a nutshell, what is happening is a number of things. First one being this driver's side wheel bearing is bad. Has a lot of play to it, makes a lot of noise. I recently replaced the rear wheel bearings, click up top here for that how-to. And along with that, I found out that I have a bad ball joint. Actually, a really bad ball joint. Um, it did still have the dust boot on it. I actually I took it off to kind of examine it further to see if it's something that I could press out. Unfortunately, that is not the case. You actually have to replace the entire control arm. But believe it or not, these are priced reasonably for being a Saab and being the entire control arm. So while I was doing this process, I realized that I want to rust proof, because I do live in a rust belt state, rust proof inside this fender liner. It's a very common issue in the rust belt states for crap to culminate or gather here and eventually rust from the inside out this fender. So what I am planning to do is take out this wheel liner, not required to have all of this crap out. So I'm just saying that right now, you can have this wheel liner and everything else in here. It just makes it that much more simpler for me to show you the process with all this stuff removed. But basically, to remove this wheel liner, there is a slew of bolts. The most painful part are these 10 millimeter nuts that should be here and here. Two right there. There's one still right there. And then another two somewhere. There's one right there. And there's actually a stud here where there should be one of those nuts. To get this wheel liner out so I can rust proof the innards of this fender to prevent, again, this from rusting out, I need to get this wheel liner out. A common issue that I've run into on any 9.3 that is in a rust belt state, you try to remove these 10 millimeter nuts that should look like this, you back them out, and it actually snaps off the stud. Why this happens is that it's a metal stud, steel stud that's welded to the body. You have this plastic 10 millimeter nut, but it actually has a metal steel sleeve inside of it. The steel sleeve rusts and freezes onto the steel stud attached to the body. As soon as you back that out, it snaps. Most people actually leave it as is, but unfortunately, after time, this rattles, and especially if you break more than one of them. So I have come to a crossroads here where I either A, leave it as is, or B, fix it. And I've actually seen people kind of hack these back together so it prevents it from moving about. You can actually get a sheet metal or a self-tapping screw and run it in here. But I hate that. I, it just makes me cringe knowing that I hacked my car. So today I have come up with a solution. While it might not be the most cost effective, it's going to be the closest thing to the original equipment manufacturer. And in case you're thinking, well, Gary, I'm never going to have to remove this fender liner because I'm not living in a rust belt state to need to rust proof this. Well, just think if you ever get into a fender bender, you find a replacement fender, you're going to replace it. Well, guess what? You need to remove this fender liner to get access to remove this 
fender. So to do general repair work inside this wheel well, fortunately you don't need to remove the fender liner. Even getting the front bumper off, you only need to get access to these eight millimeter screws, which are never really a problem. It's only when you need to remove the 10 mil plastic nuts with the metal sleeves that you end up snapping those studs. So whether it be rust proofing or just generally replacing your fender, you're gonna have to remove these. We'll go ahead and tackle and show you the best way to resolve that. So how we're gonna go about this is with one of these guys. I'm not even gonna begin to attempt to pronounce that name, but what this is, is a riv nut gun. This is entirely different than a rivet gun because it uses what's called riv nuts. Now this specific kit, I will link in the description. It's probably the most cost effective one for sale right now. And it comes with, I think three different metric sizes as well as three different standard sizes. And I believe 15 of each size in the riv nuts. So what I'll be using is the M6 because this is actually a common size on the Saab. Now these are OEM bolts from a Saab that I parted out. So I am going specifically with this style that has a built-in washer and it's an OEM bolt. But there's other common bolts on a Saab that are M6 that you can use. A Torx one like such. This is a common one with the uh, cap and the head and everything built in so you don't need an additional washer. But this is a OEM Saab bolt. But this is something that you can pick up in a massive pack from your local auto part or hardware store and will be relatively cheap and will look somewhat OEM. All right, before you watch fully, put your bet down below whether I'm gonna break this one off or not. <laughs> there it is. And I went as slow as possible, but unfortunately this stud snapped off in this nut as well. Bummer. This is officially a giant bummer. I snapped off two more. So I have four studs in total that are broken. One at the top, one on the back side behind that tie rod end. This one up top, which would be closest to the struts. And this one right here, closest to the brake caliper at the front. So I have four that I need to repair. And coincidentally, the only one that didn't break is the one right here that didn't even have a nut on there. So I highly recommend if you are able to get these out, put NICs on them when you put them back together. The six eight millimeter bolts are removed. You have one right there, another two, one right there, one right there. That makes three, a fourth up straight, five and six by the rocker panel. And of course those 10 millimeters with studs that we ended up unfortunately breaking, but now we are ready to wrestle out this fender liner. And for me, it'll be a little bit easier because I don't have the strut in there, but it's relatively speaking the same process with the strut in here because there's actually a cutout. As you'll see when I remove this liner out, that even with the strut in there, it's not that bad. This is what the inside without that wheel liner looks like. Forgot to mention, if you ever have any washer pump issues, it is a dual pump system and you need to replace those. Or even you have an issue with the washer fluid reservoir right here. It's a massive, massive reservoir. You're going to have to remove this wheel liner. So I'm going to start with the one closest to the washer pump first. Have the Dremel with the cutoff wheel and we'll just cut this off as close to the body as possible. Next up, I have the flap wheel on my grinder, and we'll want to make sure that we don't nick this wire here. So we'll just be careful and go slowly. We have everything ground down now. This one I went a little bit high, but I would rather go that direction than that direction. This one turned out pretty good. 
probably one of the most tricky ones is up top but if you're wondering where we are going to be drilling the hole it's actually somewhat easy to notice and there is some remnants of the stud right there so we'll punch exactly in the center of each one of these and drill them out before you go hacking into the car drilling holes and such definitely good to do a test run first so we have a rather thin yet stout piece of metal Unfortunately, I don't know the gauge offhand, but it really doesn't matter as long as we have some piece of metal that we can drill into to make sure we have the proper size for the rib nut to go into is what we're looking for. So I have a bit that is size 2364, and I will link one in the description, but I believe this will be the perfect size for the rib nut to go into. Take the end of the rib nut gun, screw on our M6 right there spread the jaws out and we'll put it in like such twist this so you can see it and we'll just crimp away rib nut gun is backed out of it and let's see oh yeah that's nice and sturdy we'll have our test m6 bolts screw into it oh yeah that will be perfect got my punch to mark the perfect center so that once we start to drill, the bit will not walk. I'm going to start with a much smaller bit just to get the hole started, and then we'll step it up to the correct size that we need. Got the target 2364 bit now in place. This will be the final hole that we drill. All holes are drilled. I ended up spraying a little bit of sealer primer over top just because I ground it down to bare metal. In case you're wondering about that remaining stud, I ended up knocking that out. That way I have five uniform riv nuts so it all looks the same. I couldn't do four with the original stud. I just had to kind of streamline it. So now that that is all cleaned up, we're going to get the rib nuts in here. And then after I do the rib nuts, I'll actually go a step further and put my POR, my Paint Over Rust 15 paint, which will be the top coat. And I'm not doing the entire wheel liner. I'm just going to do these areas that I ground down to bare metal. And like I've mentioned probably too many times, but this right here and actually up inside this wheel liner, common rust areas. But now we're ready to bust out the rib nuts. So I give it three or four good cranks, back this out, and this rib nut should be nice and seated permanently. Oh yeah, not going anywhere. Rib nuts are all installed. And I noticed something that how I had this set up, I actually had this screwed in too far and it would cause me to basically need to do four compressions on this to cinch the rib nut down. Whereas I eventually backed this out. It's actually really simple. You just unscrew this and then it actually only took two go arounds and 
Of course, it does come with directions, so definitely follow those. Part of the wise, have this out a little bit farther out. I thought I wanted it screwed in as much as possible. That is not the case. Fast forward through time with a little movie magic. I now officially have the brand new wheel bearing installed, the original rotor, the pads because they're in decent shape. Those are back installed, painted calipers on, new slider pins, old dust shield painted with that poor 15, as well as this knuckle. The old control arm, that's just sitting in place. It's not mounted just yet because I'm waiting on a brand new one of those. Strut's not in. I need a new mount plate on top of that. But as you can see here, I pour 15 rust proof. The subframe, I did right around where I did these rib nuts, the seam, as well as in behind here and up top of the wheel well. So this is all good to go. We now just need to throw in the wheel liner and fasten the new bolts in. So here's the finalized product. Not a bad idea to throw a little bit of anti-seize on these bolts, but look at that. Looks like it could have been this way from the factory. So the little eight millimeter bolts, those are all in as well. No real torque spec on those, just torque them down to tightness. That doesn't seem like you're gonna snap the bolt, but what is really cool about the bolts that we replaced so this is the obvious old plastic broke one. This is a 10 millimeter. The new nuts or the new bolts, they are actually 10 millimeter head as well. So that's really cool. And I think it cleans the wheel well up a little bit here. So not that anybody's really gonna be judging your wheel well, but I think if somebody were to change your tire or even if I were to change my own tire and I knew that I ran some self-tapping screws inside here, I would just go mad. and. This is actually super duper solid. So if this video helped you out, if you like this idea, be sure to give it a giant thumbs up. If you like how-to stuff and especially saw videos, consider subscribing because I have a ton of stuff out there. So go check it out and maybe it will help you restore or repair your Saab 9.3. So with that being said, I appreciate you watching. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Links will be in the description and I'll catch your friends next time. Thanks for watching.